Every Wednesday, Adelaide Ortega, with the aid of her trusty guide dog, Caraway, embarks on a journey across town to teach a ceramics class at the Braille Institute. Ready? Okay, Caraway. Good girl. See how steep that is? Being blind means there is no shortage of challenges and obstacles along the way. Oh, good girl, good girl, come on. On the other side of town, Karen Johnson is starting her trip to a doctor's appointment. Using a wheelchair means she has to deal with her own set of challenges to get from point A to point B, one of the biggest of which is curbs. If we don't have a curb cut, we, like I said, have to find a driveway, go into the gutter, and then wait for the signal to change or for the cars to stop if it's a, if it's a sign. Sometimes there's quite a distance before a driveway to travel to get where we want to, to end up. So during that time, it's in, it's in the gutter. That's where we have to go. We have to travel. But over the last few years, Ortega and Johnson's trips have gotten a lot smoother thanks to something many of us may take for granted, curb ramps. The new ramps are different from the old ramps in a number of subtle but significant ways. Over on the far side is an old style curb cut. You see how it's just one cut and it's kind of in the middle of the radius of the turn. The problem with those kind is that if you're in a wheelchair, you actually have to get out into the street itself and then turn up into that. Um, so we've changed to this design right down here in front of you where you can just go straight across. And so if you're pushing a stroller with children and one of them is walking, you don't have to go out into the field of travel and worry about kids getting in the way of cars. These dots are uh, for cane, for people who use canes to, for, uh, to feel where they're at, but also it helps me to identify where I'm at. Like when I get to here with my foot, I can feel the dots and I know that I'm going to turn over here to go to catch the bus. And while over 1,000 curbs in the city have been identified as needing ramps, the funds available to install them is limited. Each year we will do a minimum of two projects, one funded through city funds and another that we've been able to get community development gr block grant funding for. In 2009, the American Recovery and Reinvestment Act, or STIMULUS, offered the opportunity to install a lot more ramps, but they had to be shovel-ready. Thanks to the cooperative efforts between the city and the Access Advisory Committee prior to that, the city obtained funds to build 71 more ramps. We knew what the need was. We knew there was support from the community, and it was a really straightforward process to tell uh, Caltrans and FHWA that, hey, this is what we want to do with a big chunk of that money. But while Adelaide and Karen are grateful for the ramps, they are quick to point out that they aren't just for the disabled. They're for anybody, for a, a woman with a baby in a stroller finds they're much easier for her. Somebody with a cane finds it's much easier. The ramps are really important because, you know, they do help a lot of people. And you know what, a lot of, we're baby boomers now, you know, we're slowing down quite a bit too, so the ramps are very helpful. The truth is, every single one of us, at some point or another in our life, is gonna appreciate that. So it's a good thing. 